So now, uh, section 1.3 is about fundamental regions. I'm going to start with a mathematical definition of the fundamental region, then I'll show you pictures. A fundamental region, script V, is a subset of the real n-dimensional space. It's a shape that, if you shift it by each lattice point, it will exactly, the whole of the real space will be covered. Exactly. So mathematically speaking, we can write that as the um, whole real space is the union of the fundamental region plus offset by the lattice x, where x is any lattice point. And the no overlap means that the fundamental region shifted by x and the fundamental region shifted by y is always empty for any x not equal to y. So there are two important fundamental regions I'm going to talk about. One is the parallel pipette and the other is the Voronoi region. Okay, so here is a lattice with generator vectors. We have the origin 0, g1, g2, and g1 plus g2 here. So the fundamental region, the parallel pipette, is the region inside of this space. The parallel pipette is given as theta1 times g1 plus theta2 g2 between 0 and 1, where 0 is allowed, but 1 is not allowed. So you can see that anywhere inside of this region is satisfied by that equation by taking, scaling the generator vectors by a number between 0 and 1. On the lower end, where theta is equal to 0, we have these boundaries here. And they're included in the region, but the 1 indicated by the dashed boundary is not included in the region. So I make a big deal about this. Normally it wouldn't matter that much if you weren't concerned about tie breaking. But if there was a point which was exactly on the boundary and you had to decide is it in this region or that region, then these boundaries become important. The other important fundamental region is the Voronoi region. So the Voronoi region for some lattice point x is the part of space which is closer to x than to any other lattice point. So here we have the hexagonal lattice and we're looking at the fundamental region for one of its points. Is the set of all of the u in Rn such that the Euclidean distance between u and u minus x, I'm sorry, that the Euclidean distance from is smaller. So this is the Voronoi region for the point zero. Just want to look at this a little bit more carefully. Look at one lattice point and one of its neighbors and draw a line between them. Cut it in half. Each of those distances will be called rho. And the midpoint will certainly be a boundary of the Voronoi region. This particular lattice isn't exactly the hex lattice. It's the one that's scaled by a little bit. So those two points are the two that are closest to each other. There's another point which is not closest, but it is important for defining the Voronoi region. So there's another vector draw a line to it and split it in half. That distance might be rho prime. And we call that the Voronoi relevant vector. So you do that for all of the neighbors and you get the Voronoi region. So you notice that it has some properties. The Voronoi region is convex. The Voronoi region is always a polygon in two dimensions. What that means? It means it has straight sides, right? But in n dimensions, we don't use the word polygon, we use the word polyhedron. So the Voronoi region, generally speaking, is always a polyhedron, which is convex. Now, we have two important fundamental regions, the parallel pipette and the Voronoi region. We could have other strange looking shapes as well. But since taking this shape and translating it through the space is supposed to generate the whole space, 
This implies that the volume of all the fundamental regions is the same. So for a given lattice, all fundamental regions have the same volume, and we denote that V of lambda. And the volume is equal to the absolute value of the determinant of the generator. This is really great because it gives us an easy way to compute the volume of the fundamental region. So of course the determinant could be negative, but the volume is never negative.